What information and documentation do you need to buy a car at a car dealership? Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy. Feeling amazing today, here with the amazing Elizabeth, the homework gal. <laughs> today, we're going to provide you with what you should plan to bring to the dealership if you're going to buy a car, especially if there's any chance you'll be using their financing. Of course, we always recommend that you start with your own bank or credit union first before visiting the dealer. So don't skip that important step. And some of this won't apply if you're using your own financing or paying cash. If you do plan to pay with cash, make sure the dealer accepts your form of payment, like a debit card, personal check, etc. You don't have to tip the dealer off in advance that you might be paying in cash, but I do recommend simply calling them and asking cryptically, what forms of payment do you accept for your down payments on a car? If you do plan to pay with cash, the forms they accept for down payments will also be acceptable for just paying for the entire amount. That's right. By the way, you've heard us say many times with down payments, you should plan for at least 20% of the purchase price with cash down and also pay the tax title and license fees from the state at the time of purchase. Don't ever roll these fees and taxes over into your loan. Yes, so regardless of what the scenario is, you should never roll the state taxes and the title and transfer fees into your car loan. The documents needed to buy a car on finance are fairly standard regardless of where you live or whether you're buying new or used cars. Be prepared to provide the following to your car dealer or lender. How good or bad your credit is determines on how much of this applies. In general, the proof documents you'll need for a car loan include Proof of identity. Yes, you do have to identify yourself. It's the law. A lender must verify your identity so they know who's getting the loan and connect the loan to your social security number. Since you're buying a car, you'll probably have a driver's license and make sure it's current, not expired. In some states, a passport or other government issued photo ID does the job too. But just to be on the safe side, just plan on having your current driver's license with you. It's a good idea. Yeah. Proof of income. Current pay stubs from your employer are often requested to provide proof of income for car loans. But do you need pay stubs for an auto loan? No, not necessarily. Other options may be accepted or could be required, like current bank statements, W-2s and 1099s. If you're self-employed, your most recent two years of income tax returns can also help prove to a lender that you have the stable income to keep up with a car loan payment. Funny that the banks tend to pick on the self-employed entrepreneur the most, isn't it? Yeah, it is pretty funny. Proof of insurance. When you're financing a car, the lender wants to know that the insurance will protect the vehicle you're buying since they also own the car until you pay off the loan. A quick call to your insurance company can usually get you an insurance binder to prove you have insured the vehicle before driving it off the lot. In most states, your current insurance company provides a temporary policy for the new vehicle you're buying for about 15 days, but we recommend to call your insurance agent immediately after. Calling your agent for a rate quote on the type of vehicle you're purchasing is also a good idea. And then, of course, there's proof of residence. Acceptable proof of residence for car loans may include a driver's license, utility or insurance bills, mortgage or lease statements, and bank or credit card statements. Generally, mail that has your name on it and address on it, proving you live where you claim to. And a little extra due diligence and a couple of additional things that you can think about if you're financing. Consider pulling your own credit report before car shopping. It's free once a year, so why not? Review your credit history and score before you go to the dealership. If needed, as early as possible, resolve any unpaid or late bills, which can improve your score. The higher your score, the better the terms your car loan will have. And then there's discount information. There might be discounts available from any number of sources, which could include your credit card company, surprisingly, the dealership or the manufacturer. To take advantage of these discounts, you may need to provide proof that you qualify. You'll also want to look over any fine print involved. A list of references can sometimes be needed. If you're applying for a loan through the dealership, it might help to have a list of references, especially if you have less than excellent credit. This list should include the names, places of employment, and contact information of people who can vouch for you. It should be people who don't actually live with you. Rebate eligibility documents. Many dealerships and manufacturers commonly offer special rebates for military members, students, and yeah, recent sure. graduates. If you want to take advantage of one of these rebates, you have to provide documentation proving your eligibility. If you're planning to trade in your current vehicle as well, you'll need to have additional documentation on hand to expedite that process. You should have the following. Certificate of title. The certificate of title is necessary to prove to the dealership that you own the vehicle you're trading in. If you can't find your title, you can obtain a duplicate from the Department of Motor Vehicles office. Keep in mind that you'll have to pay a fee for this duplicate. 
Vehicle registration. If your car isn't headed to the scrapyard after you trade it in, <laughs> you must provide the vehicle with registration. The dealership will usually accept an expired registration, by the way. However, they will knock the cost of renewing the registration off the car's trade-in value. Okay, now clean your vehicle. It seems like a no-brainer, right? But not everyone mm -hmm. even does it. The car doesn't have to be spotless before you take it to the dealership. However, you do want to make sure you haven't left any of your belongings in the car. It's also good manners to clean out your food wrappers and other trash so the dealership doesn't have to. When I had a car customer who forgot this important step and arrived at the dealership that I was working at, I'd take their car down to our car wash, hit them with a vacuum, and clean them up before our appraiser saw the vehicle. I didn't want my customer getting hosed on their trade value. Actually, I remember you doing that. Yes. How many car salesmen do you think are out there right now doing this to customer trade-ins these days? Probably nobody. Nobody at the dealership that you were at. That's right. There's also service records. If you have them, provide them. While the dealership will pull up your trade-ins vehicle history, it's helpful to provide service and maintenance records that might not be included in the report. The reports are surprisingly incomplete, people, and in contrast to what most of you believe. You need the account number for your trade-ins loan. If you still owe money on your trade-in, you'll need to bring that loan account number with you. You can find the number on one of your payment stubs. You might also want to contact your lender to see if they have a specific process for handling trade-ins. It's also helpful to obtain what's known as a 10-day payoff amount. That's exactly what it sounds like, an amount that's good for 10 days. If you're buying your car out of state, make sure that you see our video, Legal Risks of Buying a Car Out of State, Attorney Dan Whitney with Kevin Hunter. Dan Whitney is a truly great attorney from Towson, Maryland, who has made a living out of helping car buyers defeat crooked dealers. He's got many, many different uh, settlements. Be aware if you're buying a vehicle out of state, not only are there risks involved, but the requirements might differ from your state of residence. Mm -hmm. Contact the DMV of that state to go to its website to determine those requirements. Some states will require that your new car pass a smog test, emissions test, or safety inspection before you can drive it home. Speaking of smog and emissions, did you know that one of the benefits of the product we've chosen to promote, the MPG Extreme X-Cap, is it actually reduces your vehicle's carbon footprint? Yes, because it increases the percentage of fuel burned in the combustion chamber. So besides boosting fuel economy, the MPG Extreme X-Cap is very environmentally friendly. Yeah. Right now, in addition to reduced emissions with the fuel economy boost that I've experienced, I'm driving two and a half months out of the year for free. And... Look at all these great independent reviews, four out of five stars. While we agree that it doesn't produce great results on every single vehicle on the road, 81% of those who tried it recommend it. That's most people. For most people, the XCAP adds up to big savings on fuel costs at a time when it's really needed too, right? By the way, after conducting our own trial test, both Kevin and I purchased the ISR package, which is the best value on XCAPs, 100 caps for on $199 plus shipping. You might consider that option too, especially if the vehicle you're driving happens to be two, three, four, five, or more years old. If I've just described the vehicle you're driving, you happen to be the best candidate for x -crap trials. And if you have any questions, email us at kevinthehomeworkguy at gmail.com or call text to 701-441-3399. I'm always happy to help. All right, enough on that. If you're new here at the Homework Guy channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. We welcome you aboard and of course, <laughs> Please share our videos with your family and friends. Thanks everyone for coming back to our faithful followers. You guys rock. I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, signing off with the amazing Elizabeth, the homework gal. We, we gotta, gotta go. go.